My side's a little clean. Chris is not so much. So we thought it was gonna be like two weeks from today for our water to go down, but it's only been two weeks since the actual hurricane. And you can see our flood level is right about a foot and a half to 18 inches. And, uh, but we're gonna rebuild Garage Mahal 2.0. Joel's working on a new sign for us too that didn't get here in time, which is good because once we're done and it's all back to what you guys saw in our previous video, it's gonna be even better. So hopefully we'll have AC fixed by then too. Well, there's a lot of dead fish in here. Mosquitoes, how else can I see mosquitoes? Oh my God, they're everywhere. Yeah. Do it. Woo! It's like a thousand mosquitoes on the wall. Ah! Get away! How do we get rid of mosquitoes? I don't know, it dries out, they die. I put like 1800 dehumidifiers in here. Uh, but we're gonna have mosquitoes anyways because this whole place is a swamp right now. So I'm not surprised that they're in my shop too. So we're gonna clean this whole thing out and start from scratch. Cause now we know what we want it to look like cause we already had it there. And we're gonna get a good floor scrubbing that I didn't get to do previously cause we had already moved in and then got the floor scrubber. So now I get to get all the little crevices. Everything is coming out. This is what the rest of the shop looks like. This is that sludge, that crap that floated in here. I did, me and Chris did our best the past two weeks, like with the water in here, just to squeegee it out, even though we know the water would come back in. We wanted to get all the sediment off the floor, and we did pretty good considering the whole floor looked like that. The fact that it's this good, I'm happy with. It was worth the, uh, the process of squeegeeing it like five or six times. So I figure, end of next week, we'll be back up and running. Oh shit. Oh, 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 I almost lost it there, Joel. <laughs> in the meantime. In the meantime. We're going to show you what we did before our shop flooded. I know you guys already seen part of the install on Chris's JZX. We're going to actually do the front now. So roll that beautiful bean footage while I get dirty. So this is our final episode of our update for our 90s Toyota chassis, the JZX. We're going to start with some lower control arm bushings. These will be similar to the tension rod bushings that always wear out in the 240s, the S chassis. Then these will be your lower control arm bushings. Also, one lowering the car, these are going to have a tendency to take a lot more work into them than the factory one. We also have rack bushings because this engine had some oil leaks, so all that stuff was saturated with oil, so it softened up all the bushings. Then we have more Serial 9 goodies. We have the adjustable upper control arms that they are eventually going to be coming out within a few weeks with a billet option for this as well. And then we have their bolt-on angle kit. This is the AK-49, which apparently you tell me that that has 49 degrees, 49 of, degrees of angle. 49 degrees of steering angle. So those will get bolted on just between our stock lower ball joint and the original knuckle. The tie rods here will go with that, as well as putting our front BCs in place. Now Serial 9 offers lower control arms that will go with these knuckle, these as well. You'll have to get rack stops for it, but it'll give you an additional couple degrees of angle if you want that. So Chris is not gonna be using this to drift, but we wanted to put that on there just so you could see what you would do to make a small angle kit for the car. So they do offer lowers for this that'll give you a little bit more angle for it. But just as it is, those bolt-on ones give you 49 degrees of angle. It's gonna be a hell of a U-turn. Great parallel parking job. I just have to see if he knows how to parallel park. <laughs> So our first bushing I was talking about is like the t uh, 240 tension rod bushings is this guy. And you can see that this arm's already really tweaked. And obviously when the control arm goes up, this is gonna level out a little bit more. So we're gonna replace that with the poly as well as this rusty boy right here. So what I'm gonna do first is just remove the plate here, take these bolts out, unbolt our lower ball joint, and that way we can just pull the whole lower control arm and this arm out. We can take it over to the press and knock our bushings out. Or maybe we get lucky like we did last time. We can just hit it with a hammer and it comes out. We're not doing the ball joint though, right? We're gonna take these two bolts out and yeah, drop it? Yeah, I'm taking it out with the ball joint. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Take those guys out. Don't have to hammer it. This is all reliable floor press. I did 169 dimple dies on Savio's car with this. So me and this have been very intimate for a long time. And I don't like it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it with the socket just to start with. <laughs> I wanna explain how all cylindrical objects usually work great. Yeah, pretty much anything round is great for a press. But, you know, always be very careful when using a press because things shoot out and get very sketchy very quickly. Whoa. That's different. 
So this first one's probably just going to end up pushing our rubber portion of the bushing out of it. There will be a pop at some point, so watch your faces, your cameras, Balls. Private, private parts. This is very stretchy rubber. Yeah, very, very stretchy. Yeah. Just got to get this guy out of there. Can you see it? Oh. That's the inner. Now we're going to knock this guy back out of here, which is going to probably be fun. All right, so you found a cylindrical object. Just put that other one on top of it. It's one of my dimple dies. Put the other one. Ready? Yep. Hold on. Hold on. It's not in this side. Just a little bit up. It makes me feel better. Yeah. Getting easier. All right, let me flip that um, top. Yep. Yachty! Great timing. Now we got this nice clean bushingless bit. Let's see, you start by unscrewing your bushings. So our bushings have these big old dust caps on both sides. So this guy is going to fit right inside of this guy. So let me get something me. It's slightly bigger. The so. other side of my dimple die. Oh, oh so you close. Thought. Just cleaning out any kind of burrs or anything that are on the bore. And also, we're just going to leave that WD-40 in there. Just going to give us a little bit of courtesy lubricant. Oh, baby. Okay. You never know what you're going to need a dimple die for. That's it. Until you need it. Show us your work. And look at that. Beautiful, fresh bushing. Now we put our dust sleeves back on it, and then we're going to do our lower control arm next. Looks a whole lot better than the old junk we pulled off of there. Better than factory. All right, so um, air chisel, this thing is not budging because you can see it is pretty crusty and rusty. So now we're gonna go option B. We're gonna use this, push this center sleeve out just big enough to get the blade of a sawzall in. Then we can cut all the way from the collar to the outer lip without damaging the outer lip. That's gonna take a lot of the preload off of there. And then with the air chisel, it should just pop out. Probably should be yeah. grab on the streets. So we knock out the middle. We're just gonna saw saw through these two metal layers. It'll create a relief cut for it, so we'll be able to pop it out a little easier. Somebody didn't lock. That'd be curious. It's so so easy. You want to flip it and cut another one? Even better. Yeah. Make my life easier. What's better than one relief cut? There you go. Freedom. Fresh bushing. This side has a taper, so that means it has to go in that way. So now, because we have everything else ready to roll, we are gonna have Cricket chop this little ear where our original outer tie rod bolted up. Because, because our new Angle adapter, the tie rod goes over here, and this is in the way. So you're just going to chop it, round it out, make it look like this. I sneeze. Band saws are great because they're safe. It's not like a sawzall that'll just bounce off. Real slow speed. You really can't hurt yourself with them. They're a little expensive. They're like $400. The blades are, you can get a three pack for 20 bucks, but it's nice and easy. Just set it. Another nice thing about a bandsaw, it doesn't get hot, look. You can cut this whole thing off and touch it right afterwards. So, another cool little thing. So your AK-49 adapter just clicks right on there after you cut that out. And then they give you some long boy bolts that go in there. These long boys, but um, before he puts that back in, what I'm gonna do is take this outer tie rod out and swap it out with the new one that came with our kit. This is tie rod outer and this is right, so I opened the right one. I said R for race. Both of them say R is a better question. I'm gonna put the whole coil over in there with the lower controller. To me, that makes more sense because it single bolt passes through our lower. So if we just take the three nuts off the top right now and the one bolt holding our brake line, then what we can do is just slide the whole lower control arm up there, put the three nuts on the top of it, and then the control arm will be there instead of us having to try and maneuver it. 
bolt out here because this holds our wheel speed sensor in place to the shock. That way when the shock drops, we don't rip out anything that we can't replace. Because I imagine finding wheel speed sensors for this car isn't very fun. Even they could probably just use them from like a Toyota camera. Stop. It's very easy to do this without alert control arm. That's a really pretty assembly. It's nice. So I am going to put some thread locker on these bolts just out of courtesy. What color? Red. Use it 10. Is it 10? Oh, baby, you want butter over breakfast toast. Start light, start bright. Control. Yep, we're gonna start with the upper control arm now and just get this pin out. Take this off, that's a 17, and then two of our side bolts here, I believe, are 14. <laughs> Didn't bust my knuckle. You guys should be proud of me. And if you rotate your spring just right, you can get the bolt through. Yep. Uh, that's what I was wondering about that. Aha. Cool. Uh huh. Yep. So just like our other arms in the rear, we're gonna take this, line it up with our aftermarket arm and set our lengths the same way because this upper control arm co controls both camber and cast. So what's nice is these are on-car adjustable. So you can get your ball joint and everything set. And then when it's on the car, instead of having to pull the arm off and give it a bunch of twists to try and get it to where you want it, you can just stick a 10 millimeter Allen right in that guy and you're good to go. These are always fun to get in. Oh, they weren't that bad actually. So pretty much just repeat everything we did on that side, on this side, and then you can set your ride height, spring preloads, and everything like that and get your car. Now all this thing needs some fresh wheels. Blase, blase, more bushings. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier where this uh, engine was leaking some oil. Saturated all of these bushings here. They're going to be nice and soft when we take them out. So there's one bushing there, one bushing there, one bushing around here. I have not ever installed these before, so we are going to figure it out together. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and guess we'll take the whole rack out I mean, to get these guys the in. They don't look like they're going to be a lot of fun. Tough man. You're running into people. What you're supposed to do when you're drifting is go run into people. It's all about proximity and how close you can get. If you ain't wrecking your car, you ain't doing it right. Practice. Yeah. Watch pro cars. Watch how many times they break stuff. So. Alright, so all the 14 millimeters that hold the rack in place are out. There's only a little bolt here holding this line. These lines to the rack, which is making my life a little difficult. So. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Those fuel lines? Yeah, Joel, fuel lines going into the steering rack. Oh, why is, there, why is there a pressure sensor on it? That's why it's called power steering. For idle up? It's got gas going For through. idle up? Whoa. <coughs> Tell the truth, that's how you get power steering is by adding gasoline to it. Yeah. Mm, bro, this has freaking three power steering lines. Is that guy? Is this guy? Floppy boy. Floppy boy. Also but floppy not boy. As floppy. But you know, looks good. Not now that I've touched it, but you know, 
This guy just goes right back over it. See, that one went nice and easy. Yeah, see, these ears are a little floppy. Yeah, these are going to be fun to get in there, I'll tell you that much. You really just need to get that thing started. I'm going to throw a little bit of grease to lubricate this guy. Okay. Inside yep. here. Yeah, yeah. Flow Yo, form. Chris, you check out these new stage wheels we got for this bad boy. Flow form design, baby. up our three-part series thanks for watching how to convert your grandma's camry into a sweet drift car or a sweet daily you can be fancy with it you can be race car with it but either way it's going to drive a whole lot better now with all the new upgraded parts and it doesn't look like you're 80 years old driving this thing anymore it helps you know? definitely before and after shots yeah it's a sweet camry i kind of want to get one